history on film is actually record-breaking. So there are many films to choose from that you can say are a complete film within the Caped Crusaders universe, meaning every element such as the score, plot, casting, visuals, and any and everything in between are practically perfect in order to create an enriched Batman film. On December 25th, 1993, Batman fans got the greatest Christmas gift of all because that practically perfect film hit theaters and still puts many, if not all, other Bat films to shame. And that is, of course, Batman Mask of the Phantasm. In this video, we'll dive into this classic animated film, see what makes it practically perfect, and why it is an essential watch for any Batman fan. Before we dive in, it would be awesome of you to subscribe to this channel and also follow History of the Batman on other platforms such as Instagram, which is at History of the Batman, and I'm also on Facebook and Twitter and all of that good stuff. We have fun there, so if you want to become a Gothamite, I appreciate any and all support. Directed by Eric Radomski and Bruce Timm, Mask of the Phantasm is based within the first series within the classic DC animated universe, Batman the Animated Series, that began airing on September 5th, 1992. Batman TAS, already within its first year of producing episodes, was praised for its dark deco aesthetic, thought-provoking plots, and excellent voice cast that all celebrated Batman's long evolving mythos within DC Comics. So really, there's no surprise that the same creative team and voice cast for Batman the Animated Series wouldn't bring that same quality to an animated film. Even the opening is captivating, courtesy of the sweeping look at the Art Deco-inspired skyscrapers of Gotham and Shirley Walker's haunting score. Walker, who had said this score is her favorite composition, period, also said the quote-unquote Latin-sounding lyrics used in the main title were names of the heads of Warner Brothers just read backwards. The dramatic choir that ties into Batman's already now iconic theme already shapes this film to be somewhat of a tragedy just by listening to the music. And let's face it, that is appropriate because Batman is a very tragic figure. In speaking about the plot, Alan Burnett, who helped create Batman the Animated Series, wrote the script for Mask of the Phantasm. At first, the plot to the now fan favorite episode of Batman the Animated Series called Trial was going to be the film, where Batman is captured and taken to Arkham Asylum where he is put on trial by his infamous rogues gallery who are there to prove their devious ways of life are all caused by the Batman. But instead, we have a Gotham City murder mystery that is tied into a love affair for the ages that also highlights Bruce Wayne's early years and transformation into the Batman. What is better than that? Tell me. <laughs> In Mask of the Phantasm, when a figure dubbed the Phantasm begins murdering mob members, beginning with Chucky Sal, the Batman is automatically the main suspect, according to eyewitnesses seeing a shadowy bat-like figure at the crime scene. I love that a Grim Reaper-inspired character which was influenced by Mike W. Barr's 1987 series Batman Year Two, is compared to seeing Batman run around Gotham because Surprise, Batman is scary. <laughs> also in the first sequence, when you see the Phantasm, while on the one hand is borderline supernatural, the smoke and fog that surrounds the murderer and shadows that seemingly defines the surroundings somehow place this action-packed scene within a 1940s Pulp Fiction novel. As Batman tries to hunt down this killer and discover the connections to the murders, Bruce Wayne's actual love of his life, Andrea Beaumont, returns to Gotham City after not seeing each other for 10 years. Bruce Wayne and Andrea Beaumont's doomed romance, which began when they were both attending Gotham University, from beginning to end is framed by the demise of both of their parents and the Batman mantle itself. Bruce meets Andrea while both are visiting the graves of their parents, Bruce's mother and father, and Andrea's mother. From the beginning, Bruce notes that he's made a secret vow to his parents and he's kept my vow so far. So already, like day one, without telling Andrea he's planning to eventually become the protector of Gotham City, 
He's telling her he's eventually going to become the protector of Gotham City. While it is inevitable that the Batman will not let them thrive in love for very long, three days after meeting, Andrea visits Bruce at Wayne Manor while he's practicing his jujitsu, and they have a playful embrace. One of the BTAS creators and screenplay writer for Mask of the Phantasm, Paul Dini, said that within the flashbacks, looking at Bruce and Andrea's romance, that evolution is supposed to show a decline of their relationship ever since their first meeting, which you can see all over Bruce and Andrea's relationship while he tries to balance his new normal love life with Andrea and his not normal training to become Gotham's savior. For example, when Bruce and Beaumont visit the Gotham World's Fair, an art deco version of innovations, to see what the future will be like in their metropolis, Bruce is distracted by the car of the future that is modeled very similarly to the future Batmobile. In actual back-to-back -back instances, when Andrea calls her father Carl to meet her new boyfriend, when they are walking, they witness a bike gang harassing someone for their money. Bruce intervenes and fights them, but when focusing on Andrea, it gets him hurt, which in the end just frustrates him. Bringing this frustration home to Alfred Pennyworth because he always brings his frustration home to Alfred because that's his dad. You know what I mean? Anytime Bruce is going through something, whether he wants to admit it or not, he always goes to Alfred, which is why Alfred is like the greatest character in the Batman family. You can't tell me otherwise. But Bruce realizes that he can't have both in his life because he cannot be dedicated to both fully. Like he can't be fully dedicated to having a healthy relationship with Andrea while being fully dedicated to becoming this vigilante hero of Gotham. Which I think is one of the most interesting aspects of Batman's universe in any media. I'm trying to tackle this dual identity and try to figure out how he can be somewhat content and happy in this life and trying to see if it is possible to have normalcy and the quite fantastical all wrapped up in one person. <laughs> but you learn from time to time that it is quite nearly impossible for Bruce to accomplish this. And in one of the saddest <laughs> scenes, not just in this movie, but like in almost any Batman media. I'm so comfortable saying that. <laughs> Bruce visits his parents' grave, asking their permission to basically break his vow to them, saying it just doesn't hurt so bad anymore. And I know I made a promise, but I didn't count on being happy. Andrea, finding him at the cemetery, says maybe her being sent to Bruce is his parents' approval to lead a happy life. What is most eye-opening about that scene is the fact that Bruce is already down to live this vigilante life knowing that he could not be happy within this existence. That is what makes Batman such a tragic figure before Bruce in this film even puts on the cape and the cow. And this scene alone, making that abundantly clear, something that comics have been tackling and showcasing for decades upon decades, is just a small part of why this Batman-centric film is still one of the greats. As we observe flashbacks that will all lead to Bruce taking up the Batman mantle. In the present, Batman is still on the hunt for the killer Phantasm and learns that Carl is connected with the murdered criminals. Also, we see Batman actually being a legit creepy stalker while Gotham Councilman Reeves, who believes that the Batman is actually behind these mob murders, is attempting to date Andrea Beaumont. <laughs> like, how is this okay, Bruce? Like, using binoculars and spying on Andrea across the street in the rain? How? Even though you have to admit that the visuals from like the flowing cape to how the rain falls on his cow kind of almost symbolize sadness and crying and all that because he's seeing the love of his life out with this man. <laughs> all the visuals are quite outstanding. I mean, that is the one reason why Mask of the Phantasm is so great because it utilizes the shadows in every panel to really mold how we observe Gotham City and its inhabitants. Because in this film and in the animated TV show, utilizing black paper and then drawing on top to really have 
the darkness shape of the show and the film it just makes it perfect for what a Batman universe should be. Sure, there's color and there's light here and there, but the darkness really is why the dark deco aesthetic of BTAS and its classic DC animated universe is what makes it still timeless feeling today after almost 30 years of this movie coming out and even the series. A plus for visuals, throughout the entire film. <laughs> but the next sequence, however, truly defines Bruce Wayne's Batman on many levels, which makes it one of the greatest in the character's animated and film history. At Wayne Manor, Andrea says she may go to Europe with her father since she's always wanted to go. Then Bruce halts those plans by giving Andrea a huge rock, asking her to marry him. She gleefully accepts saying, I didn't think I was part of the plan. Suddenly, as they're embracing, a swarm of bats exit an unknown cavern under the manor, frightening Andrea, but putting Bruce in awe. Foreshadowing at its finest, this moment puts a new spin on Batman's classic origin story, first seen in 1939's Detective Comics issue 33, where Bruce Wayne, trying to figure out what his vigilante guys should be to strike fear into the hearts of criminals, has a bat crash through his study's window, which makes Bruce decide to become a bat, which ultimately will transform him into the Batman. After, Bruce takes Andrea home to see her father, with him having clients at a late hour. The next day, as Bruce is exploring the underground bat cavern, Alfred Pennyworth delivers to Bruce a letter and the huge rock from Andrea, saying that she's left with her dad, that she's too young to get married and needs time, and to just forget about her. The next scene, enveloped in dark shadows, Bruce dons a new costume and Alfred gives him a cowl that Bruce somberly stares at and then puts on, which frightens Alfred with him gasping, my God. The birth of the Batman scene isn't just iconic, but it is central to pushing along the story narrative and to also understanding Bruce himself. As the film progresses, you learn that Andrea left Bruce and decided not to marry him because she had to flee to Europe with her father. Carl has a large debt to pay mob boss Salvador Balestra and his con men, all of whom are being killed by the phantasm in the present. Balestra, now an old sickly man, pays a visit to no one other than the Joker, whose current home is the rundown World's Fair. When Balestra thinks that Batman is picking off his new crew and soon him, he wants to pay the Clown Prince of Crime $5 million up front to get rid of Batman, which of course Joker doesn't want to do. We then see Batman literally breaking and entering into Andrea's apartment and talking with her after her dinner with Reeves, trying to learn how Carl was connected to Velestra and his gang, with Andrea giving Bruce half-truths. Also, it is worth noting that at this point, Andrea has figured out that Bruce and Batman are one and the same. Because after the second murder, when Bruce goes to investigate at the cemetery, he goes and visits his parents' grave. And then when Andrea is there, I wonder why she's at a cemetery at this hour. Like, <laughs> Andrea sees Batman visiting the Wayne grave and like any smart woman can put two and two together, which actually gives me very hardcore Silver St. Cloud vibes, which I believe is Bruce Wayne's other real true love within the DC media, whether comics or outside of comics. And this is not shading Selena Kyle's Catwoman. I think that her and Bruce are great together. I do. <laughs> But St. Cloud and Beaumont's relationships with Bruce in whatever media are some of the deepest and most defining when it comes to not only understanding Batman, but understanding Bruce Wayne. So I think that those two are probably the greatest loves within Bruce Wayne's history. Just point blank, period. Yeah, I know he has a baby with Talia and everything, but like she's just a bad person. 
<laughs> I will never not say that. But anyway, <laughs> same evening that Batman visited Andre in her apartment, the Phantasm enters Velestra's home to kill him, but he has already died by the hands of the Joker, who blows up the building with the Phantasm narrowly escaping. A thrilling action sequence occurs when Batman and the Batwing attempts to chase down the Phantasm, leading to a physical fight that the GCPD ultimately breaks up. Batman is then on the run from the police and, after becoming cowless and wounded, is saved from the cops by Andrea. Andrea and Bruce return to Wayne Manor with Alfred attending to Bruce's wounds. There, Andrea tells Bruce that she believes the Phantasm is actually her father trying to get revenge on Velestra and his men for ruining their lives. Which all ends with Andrea and Bruce rekindling their love and spending an evening together. And then the next morning, Andrea and Bruce both decide that they want to try to make it work this time which puts Bruce in an obviously odd position. At this point, can he actually step away from the cape and the cow to have a normal life with literally the love of his life within this universe? But honestly, Bruce thinking about that just goes completely out the window. Because in this scene, Bruce proves to be the world's greatest detective and realizes that one of Velestra's men was actually the Joker. Joker then pays a visit to Reeves, who informs him that the Batman isn't the murderer. To Reeves' surprise, the clown prince of crime then sends Reeves to the hospital filled with Joker venom. The Dark Avenger visits a hysterical Reeves and learns that it was him that sent the mob back on Carl after his debt was paid due to him not helping with his re-election, resulting in them killing Carl. The Batman then breaks and enters again into Andrea's apartment when the phone rings with Joker on the other end who tries to bomb her apartment knowing that Andrea and not her father whom Joker actually killed is the phantasm. Honestly, I cannot imagine how Bruce feels learning that the woman that he truly is in love with and has truly found a connection and is willing to drop the mantle for is actually the murderer that he's after. Now, this isn't really a new concept in Batman stories. It cuts deeper knowing that Bruce was going to put away his plan to be a vigilante and protect Gotham and to live a normal life with someone. And that someone is the exact type of person that Batman was created to stop. It is tragic poetry at its finest. The action-packed climax of the film comes back to the World's Fair where Andrea, officially revealing herself as the Phantasm, comes to kill the Joker. The battle almost ends with Andrea dying, but Batman on his bat cycle saves her life. Bruce then tries to convince Andrea to stop these killings, posing the ironic question, what will vengeance solve? With her response basically being, Bruce, look in the mirror, fam. Don't come here with that. Andrea then gets her hands on the Joker, and as Batman tells her to get out of there because Joker rigged the World's Fair to explode, because of course he did, she says that it ends tonight, tells her love goodbye, and vanishes with Joker. Afterwards, Bruce is in the Batcave, saddened by the fact that he couldn't save Andrea, with father figure Alfred telling him that vengeance blackens the soul, but he's glad that Bruce hasn't fallen to the abyss. Once again, Alfred giving some solid commentary there. If you look at Bruce and Andrea, even though one is a hero and one is clearly a villain and a murderer, yes, Bruce was in love with a murderer. How sad is that? <laughs> Both Bruce and Andrea's actions are being driven by the death of their parents and believes that these extreme responses are the only ones that can fulfill that loss. Which ultimately in the end makes their romantic relationship quite impossible. The film ends with Andrea on a ship alone leaving and a solemn Batman in Gotham seeing a bat signal with him grappling away. So why exactly is Mask of the Phantasm just 
the GOAT. <laughs> the only Batman animated film to be given a theatrical release until the short theater run of 2016's Batman The Killing Joke. 1993's Batman Mask of the Phantasm is a shining beacon within Batman cinematic history. The voice casting by Andrea Romano is just stellar, which includes Kevin Conroy's Batman, Dana Delaney's Andrea Beaumont, Mark Hamill's Joker, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr.'s Alfred Pennyworth, and really just the entire cast. Like, everyone did an excellent job in their role in the film. Like, everybody. Everybody is quite outstanding. Five stars all around. Storyline crafted by Alan Burnett that was influenced by Frank Miller's Batman Year One and Mike W. Barr's Batman Year Two created an incredible original Batman Citrus story. So five stars all around. A plot that includes Bruce Wayne's early years in training to become the Batman, actually seeing the transformation into the Dark Knight is a killer action adventure story that is surrounded by figuring out the murders created by the Phantasm. And you also have a sprinkle of a classic Batman villain in the clown for some crime himself. And really taking a deep look into the tragedy that is Bruce trying to find true love and trust within his personal life, especially when it comes to the romance of one of his greatest loves in any media, Andrea Beaumont, which all in all helps define the Batman mantle and the man himself even more outside of comics at that. All of that truly made the storyline just five stars. I'm sure you see a theme here. Shirley Walker's amazing score that continues the iconic melodies heard within the Batman the Animated Series show, but adds a hauntingly heroic yet heartbreaking air to the film, which all in all perfectly defines the Dark Knight within this particular universe. So the score just five stars. The dark deco art style within every scene that gives Gotham and its inhabitants a timeless aura that also fits within the gothic pulp world that the Batman truly thrives in. Five stars. These reasons and more makes Mask of the Phantasm arguably the most complete Batman film to date and probably in the future. Because while I'm not saying that no other Batman movie has a stellar score or storyline or a cast or visuals, because obviously many Batman films out there do, it will be very rare that a film has all of the incredible elements Mask of the Phantasm has all in one single project that still after 28 years since the film hit theaters holds up for both old fans who were there when it first came out and watched it to new fans discovering Batman today that see it and they're like, wow, that is an amazing Batman film. I just think that it would be rare to have a film that both is wildly entertaining, but also teaches the viewer more about the Batman's extraordinary history within DC Comics. All around, it is a perfect film for any Batman fan to watch. It's practically perfection. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this movie review on 1993's Batman Mask of the Phantasm. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a bad, a bad, a bad thumbs up. If you want to watch Batman Mask of the Phantasm, it is streaming right now on HBO Max and it is also available to purchase on Blu-ray or digital which if you don't have it in your back collection I have it linked in the description below so you can pick it up because I would say everyone either needs to watch it or they need to own it. Oh and also if you like my Batman Mask of the Phantasm t-shirt I have that also linked in the description below because it is amazing I love the colors and if you're a fan why not show it? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below your thoughts on Mask of the Phantasm and what other Batman-centric films you believe are quite perfect Batman movies and that are complete Batman films that you enjoy watching. As always, all of my social media is linked in the description below, including Instagram at History of Batman. So why don't you give it a follow and become a Gothamite? Check out the rest of my Batman videos on this channel. And of course, please subscribe so you can become part of this Batman community. It would mean so much to me. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will have much more History of Batman soon.
right here on YouTube. Remember guys, my it's all about peace, love, and Batman. Bye.